Alright guys, what's going on? The Aerial Lord is here, back for another Walking Dead vlog. Uh, this time on March 7th. Um, just a few updates in this vlog, and then also some afterthoughts about episode 10. Some really cool lore-based things that uh, I kind of wanted to get you guys to get talking about and just discuss. Uh, just in the nature of the channel. Um, first and foremost, I should probably address the elephant in the room in terms of my content. Um, the episode 10 reaction is not up. I'm sure all of you have either been wondering or looking for it or have seen it and then weren't able to see it later. Um, yeah, it was taken down for just, you know, the copyright. And this is, I think every single season I deal with this in some way, shape, or form. Behind the scenes, I know that the people who randomly come to my videos to watch the, you know, the episodes with me in them, they don't notice that. Um, you know, they constantly attack me for having, you know, this screen right here, the one right here, I don't know if you guys can see it, I don't know, but, um, they constantly attack, um, me for having the screen where you can see the video, they say that that's, oh, it's too small, this and that, um, it's either too bright, the volume's too low, whatever, and again, these are all little modifications I make so that I don't have to deal with this crap, you know, I, I, I try to give you guys my full reviews, my full commentaries, my full reactions, and, <clears throat> you know, this is something that I have to comply with, and if someone's telling me to take something down, I have to comply with that, and uh, if I need to make something a certain size, or limit the length, or limit the dimensions of the video, or whatever, I have to do that as well, so I'm, you know, I, it's probably the most common question I get, and I've said this in Q&As before, that people say, oh, why can't you make the video bigger, this, whatever, um, again, if you, this is not the Pirate Bay, so if, if this, my YouTube channel is not for that. I like to have discussions about the episode here, I like to review the episodes, I like to react to some of the major moments in the episode, so if you're here just for, you know, blatant pirating of episodes, that's not what my YouTube channel is for, so, um... Just gonna say that right off the bat, because, you know, that's part of the reason why episode 10 is not on YouTube, and... It'll probably be a week or two weeks until the episode's available because, you know, I fought the, the copyright strike, but that takes time for it to be, for the review to be processed, and then you have to wait the 10 days. It's, again, I've dealt with this many times before for many different reactions. I think, it's funny enough, two years ago at this time, I believe episode 10 of season 6 was taken down for a similar reason, and I had to fight the copyright on that, and then a few weeks later it came back, um... Yeah, and there were some other videos that this that the same thing happened. They were either demonetized or just something, whatever. Yeah, there, there were there were just various issues, and I've had some false strikes for those videos in the past as well, and I've had to get those fixed. And um, you know, it's it's always been a fight. It's always that's always been like a side issue I've always had to deal with, and I don't bring it up that much on the channel. But now that there's a video, <clears throat> this this week's past episode, you can't view the reaction and. Um, only episode nine is the most recent one, and again, I'm sorry for that, but it's just the way, it's just the way it is, so, um, yeah, uh, but in terms of the episode, I guess, at the end of episode ten, the ten reaction, I gave some of my thoughts and opinions on the episode, so I might as well kind of voice some of them here, um, it was... I think a lot of people have been liking the second half more than the first half. Maybe some people thought that they would, there was more mindless action in the first half of um, season eight. And now that there's they're slowing it down with some real character moments, I mean, for all the people that said that they hated Jadis in the Junkyard group, we got some great character development with Jadis. I just love the look in her face when she's having to, de to grind up all of her people, literally all of her people, in that trash compactor, uh, and then you just see that their bloody remains on the conveyor belt. Like, that's that's heavy shit, man. Uh, that's that's just it's it's so terrible, so awful, and it makes me wonder now. This is one of the things I'm wondering: like, what are they going to do with Jadis's character? Because they did bring up some interesting things that we didn't know about the junkyard. Because Simon, when Simon goes there originally to take the guns and negotiate, Simon says. There was a helipad behind there. Uh, what was this place originally? And Jadis obviously doesn't say. But 
if you guys remember back, I think it was either episode six or five, we saw Rick look at a helicopter that was flying over. Now, some people think that Rick was just hallucinating. Obviously, the scene in and of itself was a flashback to season one when he sees, in the very first episode, when he sees the flash, the, not the flash, the, the helicopter. When he sees it, when he's on the horse in Atlanta, and then he rides forward, and then that's when he gets into the wall of zombies and has to hide in the tank. Um, so it's obviously a flashback to that scene, but if now it seems like the show wants us to believe that that wasn't a hallucination, that it has the, the, the helicopter has some type of ties back to this junkyard. And really all Jada said was that <clears throat> before the apocalypse, she came here as like an artist and a painter just to paint over the like because it was all trash so she just went there to paint over the canvases and just i don't know it, it, it the whole place was an extension of her talent as an artist and then when the apocalypse happened i guess this was a group of people that she knew and they formed this coded society you know talking very little the way they moved about it was all a system and they did this so that they could survive, and they liked it. They made something that, that was theirs. They Because the world had gone to shit, they called this way of life uh, theirs. Like, this was this was how they lived. It was unique, and they could call it theirs. In a world that was ravaged by zombies, this was something that they could uniquely uh, own. And obviously the saviors kind of shat all over that. And But the thing is, Rick kind of had a point in the episode where he said, you did this, and it's... Kind of true, because Jada's turning on Rick and then turning on the Saviors and now trying to go back to Rick. Like, she, like Negan said it best, that they were a bunch of triple-crossing shitbags. Uh, they just, they go with whoever gives them the better deal. And you could even hear Jada's trying to throw Rick under the bus when Simon came. Rick's like, oh, or, sorry, uh, Jada's was like, oh, we were delivering Rick to you. Uh, but then you shot at us. So she was trying to make it seem like she wasn't on Rick's side. And uh, Simon obviously called bullshit and is seeing these people for the line double crossers, triple crossers, quadruple crossers, whoever the fuck. Uh, but, you know, they're, they're not loyal. They're not loyal to anything. And I think, I don't know if it's interesting because what if Rick had got to the junk people first? Like, what if he had arrived before Simon did? Uh, would he, would Jadis have stuck with the with with Rick because you know that's Rick kind of didn't well, he didn't lie but the 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 deal was that Negan was trapped in the sanctuary and that Jadis Jadis's group with the junk people would be able to help them surround the sanctuary to get Negan to surrender obviously since that wasn't the case even she said different from picture and then they started getting shot and then they just ran away so in my mind they broke the deal but uh, it's it didn't seem like they were gonna win either way because again even before simon massacred all of them he took all their weapons and mind you those are all of the guns that rick scavenged from that circus and the weapons they took from the ocean side so you know, it would, it would, now now all of those belong to the saviors now. So now they have even more firepower to use against Rick. So that's that's a and and it seems like from the preview in the next episode, Eugene is making bullets. This is the first time he's actually making bullets since we knew he could do this at the end of season six. So, um, but and speaking of the ocean side, very very little was done with them. Um, Sydney seemed to be wavering whether to kill Enid and Aaron. Enid said, uh, look, like, you people don't have guns, you're unarmed, and we'll come back and v claim vengeance if they, if they, if they, kind of the same thing Rick said to Jadis, actually, because when Rick went alone to Jadis, he was like, uh, my people know I'm here, if you do anything with me, then they're gonna show up and annihilate you, so, obviously she didn't believe that the first time, but when she... When Rick defeated Winslow 2.0, he kind of proved his point. But obviously these ocean women are a bit smarter and they don't have the weird economical, life, cultural ways of the junk people. So they, And also Sydney was a good friend of Tara's and she was, the, she was the advocate for Rick's group to start back last season. But now that her grandma's dead, obviously it throws a monkey wrench. But I don't really know what they're going to do with that because Enid... 
even from the previews in the next episode, we see Enid at the hilltop. So she gets back safely, but Aaron stays behind on his own. So now Aaron is wandering around. He's still at the ocean side. How in the hell is he going? Because even Enid says it. Enid's like, if you go back there, they're going to kill you. And it's like, uh, yeah, I don't know how Aaron is. Because uh, not only that, he's a guy. He's a, a guy who, you know, a society of women. Like, how is he going to convince these women? He does mention, he said two of them were open to fighting. Uh, what were their names? Beatrice and Kathy, they were the ones when when Rick corralled them into that trap. They said, maybe we should try fighting the saviors. And the, that was when the grandma was still like, no, we're not doing it. Um, but Aaron mentions that, but still, like, killing the leader, the grandma, like, that's... I don't think anyone's going to want to work with you. And just, it seems like the constant theme, time and time again, the theme of this group is that they just want to be left alone that their lives were ruined by the saviors and they don't necessarily want to get vengeance. So unless Aaron can give them some type of gift, unless he can bring them something, there have been, you know, I don't know. But in my mind, I'm thinking maybe Aaron either runs into a character that's out there somewhere in the Walking Dead world, so I'm talking Heath, because people have said that he's supposed to come back this season but I, that's not confirmed i don't know if he will because even if he does then he would either have to be killed off or he would become a mainstay character for the future of the series um or it could be sherry we don't know what happened to dwight's wife she just is out there somewhere she said that she didn't wouldn't even know if she'd be able to make it so maybe it's just assume that she got devoured by walkers or some shit um so Heath and Sherry are two wild cards. We don't really know what's going to become of them. Um, we may. I'm thinking maybe Aaron runs into one of them. I mean, obviously Heath would be the one he recognizes. He doesn't know who Sherry is. But um, I was thinking maybe there were two theories with the Oceanside I was considering that maybe Sherry goes to the Oceanside because she knows it's a society of women that's safe, assuming she knows about them. Or And then the other theory, but people were discussing this when Simon killed all of the junk people, that... People think that it was Simon who killed all of the men of the Oceanside. And I wish that was mentioned. And I was waiting for that to be brought up. When Simon and Negan were arguing back and forth, I was kind of waiting for Negan to say, Hey, Simon, remember back so many months ago, years ago, when you did this? You know, don't do that again. It would have been a cool Easter egg to say that, the, you know, kind of explain. Because Negan would not have been someone to kill all of the men from the ocean side even if they rebelled he would have just said just kill one and use that to prove a point and that seems to even with simon's logic he said these communities just aren't getting the message no matter how many times we try to do it they're just not understanding and negan's like uh we we are saving people and it's tough and we go for the tough route and you got to respect that leadership and I think it's just great that Negan sticks to his his development. It's in some ways in this episode I was kind of like on Negan's side. Not only that, like seeing that he has the emotional component of it when he found out Carl was dead, like he's not somebody you can necessarily hate. Like you have to respect his motives and respect the way he's running things. So uh, not not Simon. I I I really th think that this is Simon's last season that he will definitely be killed off at the end of the season. The blue paint on his boot, they they use that as imagery a couple of times. And even Rick, actually Rick got it on his boot. So I don't know if either Jadis or Rick will will say something about, oh, hey, Simon, you killed all of the... Because he lied. He went back to the sanctuary and lied right to Negan's face. So uh, if Negan finds that out, there's going to... I mean, already Negan's dealing with the fact that Dwight betrayed him, but we... That woman didn't return. That look at that Laura woman, the one that found out that Dwight had gunned down all those people. There's been there hasn't been a scene with her back at the sanctuary. So did she get killed? Because yeah, I don't know. Like I don't know. It's it's weird because there is in the trailer there's a scene where Dwight goes back to the sanctuary. So I was like, well, how can he go back? Because if they know he's a traitor then they'll all want him, that'll be like an execution, basically. He's going to his own death. But the only rational reason he'd go back is if nobody knew that he did these things. So, in my mind, that girl doesn't make it back? Or they'd have to explain that, because 
she got shot, I believe, and then she was standing there, and then she gets away. And even Dwight says, like, one of them got away, I can't go back, blah, 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 I can't go back. And that's why he's with Daryl's group. Like, in the in the preview for the next episode, it's... And a lot of people are already yelling at this character. It's probably becoming the most hated character, but Tara, she's just so bloodthirsty for wanting Dwight dead because of what happened to Denise. And uh, in so many previews, she's aiming the gun at at him and, you know, oh, I'm going to kill you. Why is he still alive? Blah, 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 blah. And just, yeah. Um, <laughs> being even, re even though, like, even though Dwight has been a major asset, just being a complete bitch and just not understanding the full picture. Um... So, um, yeah, there's a lot of, lot of theories, a lot of predictions. Those are kind of the things I've laid out. I don't know what this whole helicopter thing is. I don't know if maybe Jadis was a pilot. Maybe they have relations with another group. Like, maybe Jadis' junk group was from another group, but then they didn't function in that society, so they, uh, you know, moved to another society. And I don't, I don't get it. Like, I never thought there would actually be a helipad at this thing. And the other question I have is, why does has why has Rick not figured this out yet? Like Simon visits the junkyard once, and he knows noticed that there's a helipad and bring and, men, and thinks to mention it. But Rick, how many times has Rick been to this junkyard? Like what, two or three times, maybe four, and he never has seen a helipad nor thought to ask about it, even if he had seen it. So. Or maybe he asks it off camera and we just, Jadis just doesn't, you know, obviously Jadis didn't answer to Simon, so maybe it's assumed that she wouldn't answer to Rick. I, I don't know. I, I The thing is, I don't really know what they're even going to do with her character. Like, to be honest, when she was murdering all of her people, just moping around, eating the applesauce, just kind of in her old home by herself, I thought she was going to kill herself. I was like, what is there left for her? Like, unless she joins Rick as just the sole survivor of her old community. Like, she doesn't have a community. She's on her own now. So I don't see what the purpose of staying in the junkyard is other than if there's something special with that helicopter that's that, that she needs, or maybe the helicopter will be important in the, and maybe in later in the war when there's a battle going on and they need it to, like, mow down some people or something. I don't... Ah, oh, it's a lot to think about. I don't know. There's, there's a lot of theories, a lot of things. But again, this is... It's cool that we can kind of have these discussions because maybe before last, you know, the beginning of season eight, people might have thought that, oh, it's just, you know, this person battles this person. People are shooting back and forth, back and forth. Uh, we know Negan's not going to die. They're dragging out the action. They're dragging out the action. And so maybe that's why people didn't have the greatest faith in the episodes then. But I seem to see a, a different kind of, like, take on the episodes and just people's opinions um uh, especially after episode 10 like episode 9 i think people were like okay let's finally accept the fact that carl's dead let's finally move past this character um and let's just have a show where you know we feel the repercussions but then we also deal with who's left and that's the mentality i'm taking and i think people should do the same thing so so let me so let me know what you guys think of some of those predictions. There's, you know, there's just a lot of theories and things now, which is with multiple characters. Also, I don't really know where Father Gabriel is with the with Doctor Carson. Um, it looked like he was holding a gun at somebody, or he finds some random house. I don't know. I have no idea what Gabriel's doing in that episode, but um. I don't know. Lots of questions. Lots of questions. Hopefully, we get some answers next week. And um, yeah, I'm just I'm looking forward to it because I know in the back of my head that Negan will be defeated in some way by the end of season eight. Like it's pretty clear to figure that out. Um, but how is the question? You know, who betrays who? Like a lot of these things have to start moving now. Like the gears need to start turn. You know, the wheels need to start spinning in motion for this to happen. Um, because we're on episode 11, so we have 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, six, six more episodes. So, you know, they, they got to bring all of this together. You know, the Oceanside's got to come into the fray at some point, I would assume. You know, Jadis has got to make a decision as to what she's going to do. Is she going to mope around? Is there something with the helicopter that's going to come into play? Is she going to join Rick? Same with Simon. Is he just going to be killed off? Will Negan find out about the paint? Will Eugene turn? Maybe he'll make the bullets, but he'll give them to Rick instead. Lots of things, lots of theories, lots of questions, um, but I'm glad I can discuss them. So, again, thank you guys for watching. 
Um, I'll let you guys know on Twitter as soon as the episode 10 reactions back up. I'm going to have to modify my screen for episode 11 a lot, um, just manipulating the image because I don't want to run into problems with, um, with the copyright again. Um, so I, uh, I've got to make sure that that... Um, so I actually, if you can tell, I actually flipped the screen. I, I forgot to flip the screen for last week's episode so that it's a mirror image. So I had to do that again. So you know, there's some things and modifications that I'm going to have to make so that the video looks a little saturated and just off. So uh, it is what it is. Um, again, I cannot change that. So do not ask me to. So uh, all right. So anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. Um, that's it from me. Um, and yeah, I'll try to make maybe. Uh, maybe more of these, but I usually do like one a week before the, it's kind of like my preview afterthoughts for the past and then the next episode after, because we're right in the middle of the season, but again, it sucks that my episode was taken down, but what can you do, so, so anyway, I will see you guys later, thanks for watching, and as always, leave your comments and suggestions down below, peace.